what's going on YouTube welcome back to my channel it's your boy Snoopy East 408 and I'm excited about this mukbang because it's Super Bowl time y'all now let me just give you guys a quick little sum sum before we get into this alright excuse the dryness of my nose it's cold weather be chapping me up alright so you can see I got on that Pittsburgh Steelers now I was a Steeler for a quick minute but I'm originally a Raiders but if you want to rewind all the way back to the 80s and the early 90s the best team was the 49ers, and I'll tell you why. We didn't have one-man teams. We had Ronnie Lott, Jerry Rice, uh, Bubba Paris, Tom Raffman, Roger Craig, John Taylor. We had Steve Young. We had Joe Montana, a little crybaby ass every time he got hurt. Who else? Man, we had a uh, – did I say Ronnie Lott? I probably did. All-star team lineup. You know what I'm saying? So everybody who's a real OG in this NFL knows what I'm talking about. Even the Raiders, man. Ronnie Lack played for the Raiders, too. We have Bo Jackson, Jay Schrader for the quarterback. We had, um, man, uh, 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 Marcus Allen. You know what I'm saying? Heavy hitters. So I kind of fell off on the uh, whole NFL thing for a quick minute. But anyway, it is what it is. I'm not trying to see the Patriots win. I'm all about that West Coast. So... Rams, let's get it in. All right, Mook bag. Let's get it. Black on black, always looking crispy. y'all so what we have right here can y'all see this let's see if we can angle this a little bit better all right so what we have okay so we got some ribs right here how is it can y'all see this properly Up to the side a little bit. Oh, this way. There we go. Okay. So, we got some spicy noodles right here. The Korean noodles, and they're not the two times fire noodles. I'm not trying to have a flaming ass in the morning. You know, I don't want no hot booty hole. So, we got some ribs right here. Now, with these ribs, I season them with onion and garlic, salt, black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder excuse me um and then i took some light brown sugar and some special secret spices that i bought that already has like seven spices in one mix that up so you get sweet and spicy savory in one time hit it with some diane sauce so i baked it turned the heat up hit it with the dry rub put it for another 20 minutes drop the heat let it sit right here i got some extreme loaded cheese fries not chili cheese fries but just cheese fries so um we got um crinkle cut fries jalapeno sour cream tomato um cilantro uh we got both shredded cheese underneath here i put it underneath so it can melt liquid cheese some queso uh green onions did i say tomato i think i did and some lime oh and lettuce too because i see people doing nachos with the lettuce, I say I gotta try it. So I'm gonna go in on the fries first, y'all. Um, we're gonna talk about a couple things. I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about bullying. Hashtag stop the bullying. Because that shit is ridiculous. I'm gonna touch on that. I'm gonna touch on the time when I was bullied and what uh, set me off in the, uh, the whole thing with, you know, banging or whatnot. But let's get a quick moment of prayer. Shout out to my boy RDR. Um, Madison Mukbang, I'm going to holler at you about this too. Queen of Trades with Brother Lee. Um, MK Bites, I'm calling him out too. Spy 2, I already spoke to him. And uh, there's a few other Mukbangers too. I want us to come together as a unit for this. You know what I'm saying? Because our children deserve better. And this bullying shit's got to stop. For real. You know what I'm saying? But on that note, give thanks and praises to the Most High, our Creators in the Universe for blessing this food. I'm also be it. Okay. So I'm going to go in on these fries right quick. 
loaded. Yo. Is this the thumbnail? Let's let's get a rib though. Let's get a rib with it. Ooh, I don't want to try this rib so bad. This cooked for like about an hour and 45 minutes. I got that. Mmm. Mmm. With some lime and to drink. Mango flavored Haritos. Mm. So who y'all got for the Super Bowl? Man, look, let me get my editing skills up properly, and I'm coming for that um, Battle of the Kitchens, hosted by my brother from another mother, smoking and grilling with AB, the homeboy cooking with Kirby. You guys got to go check that show out. If you're wondering what happened to the Drizzle Effect, that show is taking over right now, and that show is really tight, man. So, and anybody can join it. You know what I'm saying? You got skills in the kitchen? Hit up AB. Mm. Mm. You guys can eat this with me right now. Cheese right there. Grab a jalapeno. Cheese, melted cheese, sour cream, cheese sauce on the crinkle fries. With that really good tender uh, seasoned rib. Yo, ribs and fries. Yo, boy Snoopy Z, I'm putting together combos, y'all. I'm putting together something spectacular for y'all. For 2019, going into 2020, I'm finna make up some bomb ass shit that y'all gonna love, period. So, listen, it's never too late to do my nacho challenge. I just put out a nacho challenge, um, not a challenge, but I just put out another nacho video, um, Flaming Hot Nachos. Oh yeah, I got some uh, spicy noodles right here too. So you, you guys go ahead and do what you wanna do. Do it. You know what I'm saying? I wanna check it out. Mmm. Mmm. Also, I can't wait to check out all the Super Bowl mukbangs and cooking videos. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna do chicken wings. I seen these ribs, and I was like, you know what? They did ribs in a minute. And they're on sale too, so I was like, yeah. Mm. Much love and salute to everybody. I said my comments, show me love. I see y'all. Also, thank you for all the prayers back and forth and good energy. You guys are awesome, man. This, this community that we have is beautiful, man. We got to stick together. I'm trying to pull all of us together so that we can grow together. Help each other out. Alright, story time. Mm. Let's get some of these noodles first. I have to eat this with my chopsticks, but you know what? It is what it is. Mm. Cheesy fries. <clears throat> Candy coated ribs. 
spicy noodles for that kick with the mango drink. Super Bowl Sunday, y'all. You can't go wrong. The only thing I'm missing is chicken wings, but you know what? I'm finna do some chicken wings tomorrow. Mmm. Mmm. Shout out to the homie, man, from the Bono Life, man. The Delks last year. He called me Snoopy with all them eats. <laughs> mm. I remember when ribs used to be my favorite food. It was always a toss up. Between ribs and chicken wing. Okay. So. This bullying situation, y'all. We gotta talk about it. Alright. First of all. I'm going to address this to all bullies out there right now if you're watching. I hope every single bully in the world is watching this right now. I'm going to tell you like this. I don't care what background you come from, what nationality you are. I don't care how harsh your environment is. If you go to school or just a bully in general, all right, but mainly for school, for the young kids, and you feel in your spirit that you need to go and bully somebody, use a punk. Use a buster and use a mark, all right? Stop bullying people. Leave people alone. Let people live. You ain't God. You don't have no uh, right to uh, hurt nobody and tell nobody um, or make fun of people or whatever. Stay in your punk ass lane. You know what I'm saying? But that just goes to show, and I'm speaking to them bullies out there and your punk ass parents, that you ain't got no good upbringing because your parents is hood rats too. You got some punk ass parents and you're a loser. You know what I'm saying? If you got to feel it in your spirit to go and punk somebody, especially a handicap or whatever, anybody, don't matter who they are. If you're a bully, use a punk bitch. Straight up. Snoopy said, use a punk bitch. You know what I'm saying? And I know my, my boy out there will tell you the same. So, <clears throat> excuse me. For the victims out there that are dealing with it, scared to go to school, scared to go through a neighborhood. All you want to do is go to school, get your day over with, come home, play video games, chill with your family, play sports. You have all the right. All right? Okay, no man or woman control you. All right? We're all born free. You don't pay a fee to come here. You don't own this earth. So you don't go bullying nobody. All right, you punk bitch. You don't, you don't go bullying nobody. And you know what? I'm going to keep pushing for this. What I say is this, the government needs to implement a law for the police to uh, enforce. If you get caught bullying somebody, it's a mandatory $1,500 fine. If the bitch ass bully campaign, he takes home a police report or gets escorted by police and serve papers to the parents mandatory payment of a, a $1,500 fine for bullying first offense nope hey ain't, ain't nobody getting no no chances up in this you know what I'm saying you want to play big man and shit or big woman or whatever and go punk and bully somebody you know what I'm saying what did that shit happen to your ass don't go to jail like RDR said don't go to jail punk I'll tell you like this. I'll tell you like this. If nobody's doing nothing to you, then mind your damn business and stay in your lane, punk. You know what I'm You get a hard on trying to punk people that's smaller than you or has a disability or a handicap or whatever the deal is. Little punk bitch.
talking to your punk ass. You little fake ass trolls and haters that come out here behind the keyboard, look keyboard bandits. But we up on here doing our job every day. Whether it's gaming, eating, spreading a message. I'm on here. You see my face? Ain't nobody hiding over here, punk. You's a punk ass bitch. And I'm going to call it how I see it. You know what I'm saying? Boy, you lucky. Y'all lucky. Back of my day coming up. Yep, I sound like my older G's. Hell yeah, you damn right. And I'm proud of it. But back in my day, you get caught sipping, you getting your ass whooped. On spot, on GP, on the hood. You getting beat. Beat the fuck up. Don't play that sucker shit. And we didn't care where you was from. Who you kicked it with. If you was faulty and came sideways. You lucky because of the ass beating that you got on you. Why are you so passionate about this, Snoop? What you're asking me right now, right? I was born in Canada. And I moved to the West Coast when I was nine years old. Went to the Bay Area. To a hood called EPA. EPA is abbreviated uh, as East Palo Alto. I went to a school called Willow in the heart of Menlo Park. Go lose it. Willow in the heart of Menlo Park. Go Google it. Um, mind you, I'm 13, 14 years old. I don't know nothing about gangs, nothing. Now that I'm older, of course, and this happened, I've repeated the story many times. The neighborhood, I'm sorry, not the neighborhood, but the outskirts of the neighborhood and the school I went to in Backmore was a blood gang neighborhood. If you don't know what a blood gang is, it's brothers that bang that blood, you know what I'm saying, that red. <clears throat> I didn't know anything about gangs. All I knew was breakdancing and, you know, kung fu movies and shit. Like, you know, regular young people, kids stuff. Video games, riding your bike. So... They used to harass me in school. Call me crab and all this other different types of... I didn't even know what was going on. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know you couldn't wear certain stuff or whatever. You know, I was innocent. I was just chilling. Just going to school, whatever. Just trying to get my day done and go home. So, the harassment and bullying... bullying Continued here and there. It never hit me or anything like that, but it was just to the point where it's just like you, you might, you might as well hit me because the verbal abuse was just like wicked, like you know what I mean. So this one particular day coming home, just to take a, a ten minute bus ride, and uh, they were going at it with me. I guess because I was ignoring them and wasn't fighting back or arguing back with them, they decided you know let's beat this nigga's ass. So this one day, um, I'll never forget, um, this one day, this one uh, evening after school, we were riding home, we are just like right at the stop, like two stops before mine, and they're pulling on my coat and, and you know, you know, antagonizing me and, and calling me names and stuff like that, so I look at the bus driver, he caught eye contact, he, he knew what was going on, and I was just like looking at it like, I wanted to cry, dude, I, you know what I'm saying, I was just like, I was like, man, this is before I got tough. Because I, I, I didn't know anything, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't know anything about the hood and all that shit. So, 
I built up the curse and moved to the front. And they were talking shit and shit. And um, told the bus driver, said, hey, man, uh, these uh, these guys are like, uh, you know, whatever, trying to get me or whatever. Can you can you help me? Like, um, like try to pull up closer. I don't know, something, right? I was just begging, begging, like, for somebody to help me. Because I was scared, man, legit scared. And um, it was three of these dudes, three or four, if I remember correctly. But I know it was three for sure. And um, so... The bus stops. I instantly, my instant kicked it. I was like, I gotta run. Full fucking speed. And that's what I did. So I got off the bus. I started running. Full speed, dude. And I live in the gardens, cuz. And in the garden, it's a gated community, so you got to hit, I think it was a four-digit pin or five-digit pin or something like that, on the gate, and it would open. But they had another door, but you have to have a special key to get in. I was staying with my grandmother, so, you know, we first came from Canada. We stayed at grandma's for, for a bit before, you know, moms and pops you know, had enough money to um, get us up out of there. But in the meantime, um, it was what it was, right? So, anyway, get out there. So, I'm knowing that I, I ain't going to make this gate. There's no way I could punch in the code, run to the gate, punch in the code, and wait for it to open all slow and shit and get in. And then they'll get in anyway, so... I didn't know what to do, so my instinct was to climb the fence. So out of fear and panic, I started to climb the fence. As I got up to grab the top fence, I'll never forget this. I got yanked down. They pulled me down. And... I don't like to think about death or nothing like that, but I'm young, so I'm, that, that's what's going through my head. I was like, damn, I'm going to die. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what to do. Somebody help. Somebody help. That's the, the only thing that's on my mind. Somebody please see this and help me. Somebody pull these guys off me. Nobody help me. That neighborhood was full of crackheads anyway. Um, so, yeah, so they pulled me down. And then they just started to like punch and kick me and <clears throat> like choke me out type of thing, you know. And I thought I was gonna die, man. So they beat me up pretty good. And as a kid, you're like, you don't really know about you want to defend yourself, but. I didn't know what I knew later on in life. I was just like, just take it and then they'll eventually leave. And that's pretty much what happened. But they gave me a good beating though. So after that, I told myself, no matter what I got to do in life, Ain't nobody finna put their hands on me again. Ever. Nobody ever finna hurt me. Ain't nobody ever finna put their hands on me. Period. So psychologically, I trained myself through the years. But before we get into that, I'm gonna tell you about what happened. So, my grandmother lived on a second or third, a second floor. And there was a gang of Samoans that lived on the bottom floor. My grandmother used to have this friend used to come over and knit with her. And they'd have tea and watch like Bible movies and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And um, like my grandmother was off the hook. So I'm going to cut through. Long story short, I'm going to cut through like the good parts real quick because it's already like 22 minutes in this video. Um, that Samoan lady that kicked it with my uh, grandmother... Obviously, she had nieces and nephews and grandkids and stuff like that. And their grandkids were connected. They were Crips. 
um, from, excuse me, I think it was Park Village Compton. And I knew, like, what was the hood, man? Or 20s. Or a mixture of both. Such a long time. Because this is like 88, 1988, 1989. Anyway. They see me. They knew They know exactly what happened. Because when you're in the neighborhood and you're older, you know exactly what's going on. So... Long story short, I, I, I told him what happened. And they basically, if I was older, they would have put me on a set. But out of respect for my grandmother and because I was young, was, they, they weren't going to do that. But they took me under their wing. They knew my uncle and stuff too. Um, anyway, so yeah, I told myself, you know what? Never again. Ain't nobody finna, uh, ain't nobody finna put no hands on me or do nothing. So when we moved, wow, yeah. When we moved to the south side of San Jose, oh, before we moved to the south side, I moved to the west side, and slowly started to learn the game of the street. And when I came to the South Side San Ho, I started meeting up with um, a couple G homies here and just learning what was going on. I went crip crazy nutty, boy. Straight nuts. Now this uh, milkman is not the fight episode of milkman because I got other ones too. But I got put on my set behind the mall, behind Oakridge Mall, South Side San Jose. Big homies put me on, jump me in, squad with two big homies. So it was. Done. I was like, yeah, cuz, woo, woo, this is not, like, uh-uh, nigga, you gotta go another two minutes. I said, what? Rolling, nigga, we gotta go another two minutes. I was like, oh, my God. Buckle up again. And I don't even like slap boxing with the homies. I, I was never that type of dude that liked to fight with my friends. You know what I mean? But this day, I did not have a choice. I just seen Tyrone's boot come up, bah, hit me in the face. So I buckled up like this, right, guy? Up against the fence, like, bah, bah, some rib shots, head shots. I'm trying to block my face, right? <laughs> they called me coon dog for like two weeks after that because all up under my eye, my nose sideways, lip busted, rib sore. But that's when I officially got put on the hood. And we made a vow to each other that no matter what, nobody's gonna um, hurt any of the homies. And if I can't take you down, if I can't handle you, trust me. As soon as I get back to the set, but like, hey, whoop, 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 what? We coming through like, like a swarm of bats for that ass. We gonna get you. So anyway, this message was about bullying, man. So I've been a victim of it. It's not a good thing. It does not feel nice. It's 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 um, it's just it's it's a retarded behavior that needs to be extinguished. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm saying hashtag stop the bullying. All right. So I'm putting together a campaign. Excuse me with RDR Food Reviews. If you don't know who he is, he's slacking in your mac and go check out RDR Food Reviews. Tell Snoopy he sent you. We linking up. I'm going to hit up a couple of people, but basically what, what I want to do is just raise awareness. I wake some of these half dead ass parents up and be like, hey man, look, look, put the crack pipe down, put the goddamn weed down, you know what I'm saying? Go wash your ass and smart the fuck up and watch and see what your children is doing. Stop putting them in front of the TV, leaving them all day behind video games, raise your children properly. I'm a single dad. I raise my kids properly. 
You know what I'm saying? When this deadbeat left my left me and my kids when I was young, whatever. We don't you, you don't want to be with me. You want to go sleep with the neighborhood. Do what you got to do. Go get herpes, but keep it on your side of the tracks. But I tell you what, you are gonna give up your rights to me. Period. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You're gonna go to court and give me the rights for my kids, and that's exactly what I did. And I raised mine up. And now my son is 23. He just got his license. My daughter's about to go to university. She's a genius. She's an artist. You know what I'm saying? This deadbeat, she don't know what her kids look like. She never sent no money, no nothing. I never asked for shit. I did it on my own. So I was mom and dad to my kids. Y'all could do it, man. But it takes us older Gs to inst instill it into these younger people, man. Because if you go around twerking and going partying and drinking body parts hanging or whatever your daughter's gonna see that your son's gonna see that you know what i'm saying so you are the product of your environment to a certain extent but you also are you know the company you keep too who you surround yourself with if you're going out and partying all the time your kid's gonna be a partier you know what i'm saying if you're reading books all the time your kid's gonna start reading books hey why dad always over there sitting reading them books you know what I'm saying? My kids are smart. They always see me. I'm always hitting the books. You know what I'm saying? Hit the books. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with being a nerd. Ain't nothing wrong with being smart. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to sag your pants and, you know what I'm saying, pound hella drinks and go do dope and sleep around the neighborhood and all that. You know what I'm saying? Leave that for the, the low lives, man. They'll, they'll get it when it's too late. But you got a chance now, so do it now. Change your life now. You got the chance. You know what I'm saying? You got big homies. I, I pray. All the time for my folks, you know. But you see, people, they're hard-headed. And a hard head make a soft ass. And you ain't going to learn until it's too late. And guess what? When people been passing you by, and you look back at your life, you go, damn, you know what I'm saying? I had a good thing with this dude. I had a good thing with this girl. I, you know, I had a good opportunity to whatever. But you let it go for foolishness? For what? For a couple minutes of, of pleasure? Or whatever it is that, that, that you're dealing with? It's not worth it. Y'all need to wake up, man. Y'all seriously need to wake up. This bullshit-ass radio music and shit and stupid-ass dumbed-down information that the government giving y'all. Y'all need to seriously do some research for yourself. And this bullying shit needs to stop. I'm going to uh, take this as far as I can go. Because it should be a criminal offense. Where, like I said, it should be a fine attached to this bullying. $1,500 fine to this bullying. Especially if it's caught on tape or witnessed by two or three people. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Because, y'all picture your kid getting bullied and coming home, black eye. Or even worse, like that, like the kid that already was talking about the other day. Parent come home from work, you know what I'm saying? Already sad in the heart that, you know, the kid has a malfunction. Gotta wear a bag to use the washroom, use the bathroom. And, you know, he can't, he can't, he's, he, he, he's just like medically to the point where he can't relieve himself properly like a regular human person. And got to deal with that mentally, let alone people punking him and, and making fun of him. You know what I'm saying? To the point where he felt he he, he don't want to live no more. He'd take his life? To take your own life? That's serious, dog. For you to say, listen, I don't want to be here no more. And leave a note for your mom and your pops, boy, before they come home. And then you hang yourself or kill yourself or whatever, or OD, whatever. And then your folks got to come through that door after work. Dealing with all the shit they got to deal with. And see your kid or your son or your daughter hanging by the neck. Think about it, y'all. You damn sure don't want to see your kids go through that. You know? And let's not be greedy. Not just our kids, but anybody's kid. You know? There's a time and place for everything. You know what I'm saying? But half of these parents, they don't, they don't know shit. You know what I mean? It's not like the good days when we grew up. You know, everybody's just chilling all the time, hanging out, doing dope, partying, just doing, living their wicked lifestyle. In the meantime, your kids are suffering. There's no st stability in the home within the parents. I had to be a mother and a father, both to mine. But my kids are worth more than my clothes that I wear, how I look, um, who I date, what I eat. You know what I'm saying? I sacrifice everything for them so that they can have everything that they need. To be successful human beings in the society that we live in. So that they can be happy and um, have something to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? Be better than, than we are. Than we were. You know what I'm saying? 
Another reason why I moved out to Canada, man. I don't want my son and my daughter going to school in LA. Are you crazy? My son be like, yo, fuck those locals. I'll be like, Psh, man, what the fuck is you talking about? <laughs> what? You know what I'm saying? My daughter all, you know what I'm saying, like skin all hanging out. Hell no, none of that shit. Listen, y'all can period. Anyway, I got a dip, y'all. Love y'all. Stay true. Hashtag stop the bullying. Let's come together. YouTubers unite. All right? Until the next time. Happy Super Bowl. Love y'all. Peace.